This is an extract from the Leader podcast by The Evening Standard, hosted by me, David Marsland. To hear the whole thing, search for us on your podcast provider. It's an ad campaign that suddenly caught attention, but social media mostly appears to be aghast at Dettol's posters in the underground extolling the virtues of going back to the office. In long lists of what it calls positives, it includes things like putting on a tie, carrying a handbag, receptionists, seeing your second family, and proper bants. Are these really the things people miss about the workplace? Well, Susanna Budd has written a column for the Evening Standard in which she says no one needs banter. And she's with me now. Susanna, why do you hate banter? (laughs) That makes me sound quite joyless, doesn't it? I feel like it's this legacy of this sort of late 90s, early noughties lad culture where banter was kind of used to excuse quite frankly despicable behaviour that wasn't banter, it was just a bad joke that didn't work. Without wishing to stereotype, I'm probably going to stereotype, there's a kind of banter type and it's usually accompanied by booze and babes and they get on the banter bus and there's this attitude which you see across kind of Facebook banter groups of if you don't like the banter it's because you're joyless and you don't you have a sense of humour it's like actually are these jokes that good or are they just kind of silly and if you look back at kind of the history of banter it does come from the restoration period where it was these incredible silly bawdy bad jokes about corks turning into horses which I don't really get and I just think that now employing it to make what should be a serious argument just feels a bit hollow and lame and desperate. I started writing my column because Jeremy Hunt saying people need office banter it's like it just makes him look a bit out of touch really I feel like we've we've moved on since banter. (laughs) Have you seen these Dettel ads? Susie. Some people are really angry about them. You should see some of the comments on Twitter and then the photographs that have gone up with them. Do you think some of the campaigning to get people back into the office has kind of missed its mark? It's got the wrong tone. Yeah, I mean, the, the adverts are sort of deliberately provocative, aren't they? And now we're all talking about debt all, um, which is what they want. And they have conjured up a place and a world um, some of it is quite ill thought through like kind of receptionists cheeky afternoons in the sun and I can't remember the last time I had a cheeky afternoon in the sun Susie <laughs> <laughs> what is the sun <laughs> yeah I mean obviously on a on a serious note London is facing the seismic change that is dividing people there's questions about the effect on the way the city works if people aren't going in and stimulating the economy and buying their coffee and prep and it's not just that it's going out after work it's buying the clothes to wear to work it's a it's a whole infrastructure that is the reason why we live in cities and a lot of people feel quite threatened that, that, that that's being shaken um, a lot of companies have been working flexibly anyway and perhaps that's the answer a kind of core hours culture people are in at certain times and a have more flexibility to have more balanced lives see their kids I started writing my column because Jeremy Hunt saying people need office banter it's like it just makes him look a bit out of touch really I feel like we've we've moved on since banter I kind of feel like people just want to know if it's safe to go back to the office you know forget about the banter forget about the second family as those dental ads have called it people just want to know can i get on public transport and not catch coronavirus especially as because we've got today these figures out showing that cases have risen to the highest rate since the start of june that's the sort of thing people want to know about isn't it and the problem is that so much is still uncertain and if you look at politicians then they're, they're not going there explicitly they're saying as far as they know it is safe i mean rishi sunak went on the tube today um in his face mask very chic boris johnson hasn't yet been on the tube i mean while that is to an extent gesture politics i think people will be reassured being thinking well ministers are getting the tube therefore it is safe but um as you say, like, we need to know it's safe. Like, if you're that desperate for bants that you're going to risk your life, I mean, <laughs> there's some serious questions you've got to answer about yourself. 